my students today we are going to see the cranial cavity and what are the dural folds related to the cranial cavity so cranial cavity if you see you can see the inner part of the cranial cavity so many depressions are there what are those depressions before going into the depressions you can see the cranial cavity one inner rib is there and the next one is the outer rim inner rim and outer rim between that you can see multiple foramen inside that these are all called diploic spaces they contain a vein called diploic vein and this is the outer table and this is the inner table and then if you see here you will be having the anterior cranial fossa this is the depression that is called as fossa this is called anterior cranial fossa and this is called as middle cranial fossa and this is called as posterior cranial fossa so anterior cranial fossa extend is this is the frontal uh, bone and here is the lesser wing of the sphenoid and up to this only you will be having the anterior cranial fossa in the anterior cranial fossa for um, at the attachment of the dural folds you need to know few things that is called as this projection is called as crista galli this projection is called as crista galli and this projection is called as frontal crest so this is frontal crest if you go posteriorly this is external occipital protuberance outside you can see the nuchal lines and this is external occipital protuberance and if you turn inside it is called as internal occipital protuberance from the internal occipital protuberance both the sides you will be having a sinus called as transverse sinus and this side also you will be having a transverse sinus if you see clearly this side transverse sinus is somewhat wider okay and uh, this side transverse sinus is very thin why the right side transverse sinus is larger we will see because the superior sagittal sinus this is the dural fold this is the dural fold okay um, man made dural fold i made this fold so this dural fold is attached from the so the anterior end and this is the posterior end where is the anterior end attached already i told you few projections here one is crista galli and the frontal crest so it is attached to the crista galli and the frontal crest in the front and posteriorly it is attached to the internal occipital protuberance this is the area where i showed the internal occipital protuberance before that you should know the lobes of the cerebral hemisphere cerebrum has two hemispheres you will be having the frontal lobe and you will be having your temporal lobe here and you will be having your occipital lobe not inside don't think that occipital lobe is present inside it is present on a dural fold called tentorium cerebelli so what is this tentorium cerebelli that is also a dural fold like your fox cerebri this tentorium cerebelli let me explain first this is the petrous part of the temporal bone these two are called the petrous part of the temporal bone okay these two are called the petrous part of the temporal bone and already i have explained the sinuses now i will place the tentorium cerebelli this has an attached can you see the red color margin this red color indicates the attached attachments it is attached to the bone so now i will place it okay before that you should know that something called called as anti this is the lesser wing of the sphenoid it is the projection is here called the anterior clinoid process <coughs> this is the petrous bone apex here it is called the posterior clinoid process it is not glenoid it is clinoid c l e then now i'll put the tentorium cerebelli that is a dural fold inside that and now we have placed this okay this see look at the attached border attached margin is attached to the posterior clinoid process and the free margin this is the free margin the red color see it is not attached anywhere so this area is called as free margin and this is called as attached margin now attached margin is attached over the transverse sinus both the sides and the petrous bone so i will put the attached margin here and it is attached clearly and it is now kept okay so now you see the attached border is attached to the transverse sinus in the rim of the transverse sinus and to the petrous bone and to the here posterior clinoid process but what about the free margin free margin is this one which is not attached to the bone and it is attached to the <coughs> anterior clinoid process so this is attached to the anterior clinoid so the attached margin is attached to the posterior clinoid process the free margin is attached to the anterior clinoid process now you can see there is a gap inside that through that gap if you see you can see some other foramen inside that is your foramen magnum you can see no right foramen magnum 
So, what this notch is called as tentorial notch. So, what happens inside this tentorial notch? Whenever there is high intracranial pressure inside the cranial cavity, if the pressure is high, you are not supposed to do any puncture outside. So, if you release the pressure from below, for example, lumbar puncture or uh, some other procedure, when you release the pressure from down, what will happen? This side temporal lobe and the brain stem, brain stem means midbrain, pons, medulla will be lying here. All these structures will enter into this and they got cramped by the, this is very sharp, this is very sharp and very tough. So, what happens? The soft structures will be there and then it will compress, get compressed and it leads to immediate death. That is called as tentorial herniation. So, this is about the free margin and the attached margin of the tentorium cerebelli. Now, your Fox cerebelli cerebri is attached from the crista galli to frontal crest and it is attached to the, can you see this, how it is attached? You can see the attachment posteriorly in the internal occipital protuberance like this. So, this border here in this area, you have a sinus called straight sinus. You can see this is a sinus called a straight sinus. And here on the superior surface, you will be having the sinus called superior sagittal sinus and here you will be having a sinus called inferior sagittal sinus. Now, inferior sagittal sinus comes here and it joins with a vein called great cerebral vein of Galen and forms a straight sinus. This straight sinus continues left side as left transverse sinus. Here, look at the superior sagittal sinus. It goes here and it continues as right transverse sinus. That's all about the tentorium fox cerebrae.